Hey, you smart Christians. Listen, I wanted to do this real briefly. Uh, it's been real tiring today just to the live. And but I want to cover something that's kind of being talked about a lot. And that is this whole issue of spiritual gifts and whether or not they have ceased. You get a lot of pushback, mainly because you'll see people out there who are just doing some things. And that's just that doesn't seem to line with, with scriptures. It doesn't seem to jive right with scriptures. So surely there's got to be a way to know for a fact if what's happening, some of these shenanigans that we've seen, if that stuff is legitimate or not. Some of these spiritual gifts, such as tongues, the gift of healing, uh, prophecy, or the gifts that are not so open, so apparent, right? Uh, <laughs> the gift of help and administrations. You don't see people trying to abuse those gifts, do you? You don't see people abusing the gift of being generous. You don't really see that. But you do see people abusing or possibly abusing or taking advantage or maybe even lying on these gifts of tongues or gifts of healing. Now, we talked about what tongues are. Make no mistake about it. Tongues, biblically speaking, are a language. It's not some ecstatic, uh, unknown uh, language that no one knows. That's just not what the Bible even contemplates. It is a language used to bring about people who don't know the language that you speak. It's a language, it's a, it's a known earthly language that an unbeliever doesn't know that a believer will know to bring them the gospel. So what I wanted to do was kind of look at some issues, some things in the Bible to kind of talk, to kind of shed some light on why you have this whole issue, this whole debate as to whether certain gifts have ceased or not. So what I want to do, you all forgive me for the setup, but I still have the setup for the live. And so this, this screen here is still in the way, but I do want to use it. And I want to go to a couple of passages and see why you've got the cessationists and these continuationists, which one is accurate, which one is true, which one is not. So let's just go real quick to, to, um, 1 Corinthians 13. So, <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 13, if we get to the verse 8, it says that love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. Verse 10, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. So the question is going to be, when looking at this, when the perfect comes, the things that we know in part, the partial, it will pass away. The question is going to be, what is the perfect that comes? You've got the different debates as to, is that the close of the canon? Is it Christ's return? And I'm just going to be honest. If anyone tells you that they know without, beyond a shadow of a doubt, what that is, they're making it up. They don't. We don't. Sometimes the Bible tells us some things and doesn't give us all the information that we need. God has decided not to make it as clear as we would like it, which is fine. I think in the end, I'm going to shock some people when I say this. It might not be that big of a deal when trying to figure out which side is accurate. Some of the arguments that the uh, people in the in the cessation camp would hold to that kind of bolsters their point is that gifts like these sign gifts, these miracle gifts, or what are called the apostolic gifts, though the Bible didn't call them those, but you can see why, because these particular gifts are visible. They are these apparent and outward sign gifts. The reason why there's a there's a a hesitancy to believe that they're they're still in place because what they were typically used for. Usually you would see these kind of gifts accompany someone who is trying to show or to prove to unbelievers that these are or or, or what's being preached or what's happening is a legitimate um, issue from God. It's something that, that that is certainly from God. You see it in the Old Testament when uh, prophets or let's say Moses to verify that his message is from God, 
there were some signs that accompany that. You see with other prophets as well. You see with Gideon. You see all these different people who are speaking on behalf of God, who are given a revelation of God. There'll be these, in, in often cases, these accompanying signs, these accompanying gifts, right? Same thing when it comes to the founding of the church. You'll see these signs accompanying the word of God to give validity to people who may not otherwise believe that it's of God. When Jesus came, what did you see accompanying what did you see accompanying Jesus? You saw obviously some signs, some miracles, some things that people had no no choice but to say, this is definitely of God, right? And so at the founding of the church, how would anyone, someone who's not ready to believe, how would they know for a fact that this is of God? Well, there were these accompanying signs, like on the day of Pentecost, you've got these men speaking these languages to all these different people who are from different parts who understood it, heard the gospel, and became believers. You would see these apostles, these signs and wonders following them, which is also another reason why we know for a fact that there are no more apostles today. Uh, and if there are, where your signs and miracles that should accompany you like they did others. But without getting on that again. And so when we look at some of these gifts, we don't see these gifts happening further on as we go into the epistles, into the end of the Bible. Uh, chronologically, they seem to stop at a certain point. Why is that? For example, tongues. We don't see after 1 Corinthians the issue or the gift of languages being mentioned. We don't see the early church fathers talking about tongues or languages. Now, does that mean that because the early church fathers don't talk about it and they don't recognize it, they don't have an experience, they haven't experienced it or they don't see it, does that mean that the gift that by itself is good enough to say that the gift is no longer in use? No, but it does let us know that these were the disciples of the, of the apostles and they themselves don't see this. As a matter of fact, in their writings, they have they written that they don't think that these gifts are around and that these gifts were only used for the to give, to give validity to the founding of the church. And so have they ceased? Are they still in continuation? Do we need them? Th that part could probably be debated um, as to whether we still need them. I personally don't think that we need those gifts to know that the word of God is true and accurate. I believe we've got enough. As a matter of fact, truth be told, even with all those gifts, if they were still in play, just like then, everyone is not going to believe just because they saw these miracles. They didn't all didn't believe when Jesus was, as a matter of fact, some of the same people who saw the miracles and experienced the miracles of Jesus were some of the same people who turned on him and yelled, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. So seeing the gifts aren't necessary. It just kind of, it's something that it's going to stand in judgment against you when you sit and say, or when you are brought before the Lord and you're brought before judgment, well, wait a second, you had these gifts and you stood and believed. And so you have the word and you still won't believe. And like Jesus said, if if, if someone were, were to come back from hell uh, to tell their family members that, hey, this is real, he said that they still wouldn't believe. So uh, do I think that the gifts are necessarily, have they ceased or are they still continuing? Well, I think something that Paul says might almost, I don't want to say total, but may almost make this a moot point. Looking at uh, Romans, uh, let's get there to Romans, Romans 12. Let me move this out of the way. Let's look at what he says in verse three. He says, for grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to. Well, why that's important is for a good reason. It's important because remember, People, if you've got these gifts, it's going to be easy for you to think that you're something special, right? You can you can become boastful. You can become proud. You can feel like you're the man. And so it's no coincidence that people who claim they have these gifts, they present themselves as somebody special and people view them as somebody special. Not to know that, not to say that they really have these gifts or not, but if someone thinks that this person has the gift of healing or the gift of um, tongues or prophecy, if you think that this person has that, you're going to look at him as a special person, right? And so going back to the passage, he says, for as, <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, but to think with sober judgment, not to think more highly of yourself than you ought to, but 
to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Here it is, verse 4. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Here it is, 6. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, then what does he say? In proportion to our faith. If service, in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. So what is it? What is he saying? Why Why is that important? And why does it may all, almost make this a moot point? Well, I remember speaking to some people who said that, uh, hey, this guy over here says that he has a gift of healing. Do you think that's true? Well, I said, let's say he does or he doesn't. If he does have the gift, wouldn't that be wonderful? Let's compel him to go over to the hospital to heal some people. So as Paul says, if you've got these gifts, going back here, he says again, to the person who says he has these different gifts, if prophecy, well then guess what? Prophesy. <laughs> when Muhammad goes to these Jews and he's trying to tell them that he is a prophet, the Jews said, okay, we don't think you are, but if you prophet, prophesy, tell us something. So if a person says they have the gift of healing, fine, okay, let's see them. I don't think you have the gift of healing. I could be wrong. I could have misunderstood everything that I thought about the Bible, or I could have misunderstood this whole issue of gifts ceasing or not. On the chance that I may have been wrong about this gift of healing that you say you have, well, fine. If you have the gift of healing, then heal. If you have the gift of prophecy, then prophesy. Now, if you mess up, if you are in error, if you've lied, we are going to hold you accountable and we're going to mark you and we're going to call you out. And we're going to let everyone know that you are not who you say you are. Because what's happened is you've got all these folks who are abusing or lying really about having the gift of healing, the gift of languages, uh, all the, the gift of prophecy, all these different outward gifts. Well, let's verify them because those who had those gifts who the Spirit empowered in those particular gifts, we see them. Paul didn't go around talking, talking about how, how much he was endowed with the gift of healing or prophecy. He just did it. And so he says, if you've got that gift, then do it. Whatever you've been given by the Lord, because again, he says in 1 Corinthians 12, 7, that all of these spiritual gifts, they're given for the benefit of the body, not for yourself. So if you've got the gift of healing, don't just waste it on healing yourself. If you've got that kind of gift, heal some people right? Isn't that what love would tell you to do? But if you don't, then you may, it, that may be the key indicator that you are a fraud. So if a person says that he has a gift of languages, well then fine, go to one of these countries where there is no, um, they haven't translated the Bible totally, or they need more translators. Go to one of those countries and let the gift of tongues, the gift of languages flow through you and speak to them in their language so they can get the gospel. Why don't you allow yourself to be used? If you've got the gift of prophecy, and I don't mean the gift of foretelling, I mean foretelling, you say, or these prophets will say that they have the gift of foretelling, telling the future. Well, fine. Tell us the future. Tell us. Not like some of these prophets who, who, who prophesied about Trump winning, and then he didn't. Of course, <laughs> here's what's funny, I believe. If Trump were to come back and were to run for office again and to beat Biden, you know what they're going to say, right? They're going to say, well, that was a prophecy that I had all along that he was going to be put back in office. And with some of these people, there's just no winning with him. But tell them, hey, prophesy. Give me something and let's, let's see. And if, if not, we are going to, we're going to ostracize you. We hold God's word in high value. And so if you lie about it, we've got to call you out on that. And so if you're a prophet, which means you have this high standard, you sh it shouldn't bother you anyway. So if you've been given these gifts, utilize them. But again, there's this pushback to say that people who have lied about these gifts, the natural tendency is to push all the way and say there is no possibility whatsoever. Well, which side is right? I say I lean more towards certain gifts having ceased, but I'm open to being wrong. 
And if I am wrong, I'll simply say what Paul said. If you got these gifts, then use them. Let us see. Let the love of Christ, the Spirit, flow through you, and let's take you to the hospitals. Let's, let's get COVID under control. Let's get cancer under control, you who have this gift. So whatever the gift you have, use it. If you believe that these gifts have not ceased, then make them evident to those who believe they have. Amen.